Welcome along to episode six of the Salt and Sauce Show. I'm David Simmons. Before we get cracking with tonight's show, if you could click the subscribe button, I'd be gladly appreciated. So this week's show, I have got two fifths of Dunfermline based pop rock band dancing on tables on the show tonight. They're going to be joining me on the couch very shortly. I'm David Simmons. This is the Salt and Sauce Show. Yes, welcome along to episode 6 of the Salt and Sauce Show. I'm David Simmons and tonight I am joined by Robbie and Callum from Dancing on Tables. Guys, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having us, yeah. You're more than welcome. Um, so let's just start every interview the way we normally do. Let's go right back to day one. How was the, the band born? Um, we started, we all went to school together and when we started and basically we were asked to get together for this kind of school show thing. We all played different instruments, we all knew each other um, and we decided that we actually quite enjoyed it. So it just spiralled from there and that was probably about seven or eight years ago now, maybe longer than I wish to think about. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just kind of snowballed from there really. Yeah, it just um, started, we, we kept kind of practising and we realised that we could say that we were practising for like shows and things and we could get out classes early and stuff. So. It was a good excuse to get together and start writing music, and here we are. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, do you remember like your first gigs, early doors? What sort of venues were you playing when you first sort of started? Uh, Schools to start. Yeah. With, and, uh, well, the first because the boys started the band without me um, originally, and then Hamish was uh, was going into Harry Potter world <laughs> on a school trip, <laughs> and uh, and I got drafted in to play guitar uh, for a show in Glasgow with a band called Will and the People and uh, and then I just refused to leave basically after that. So <laughs> we, we poached him from a rival school band and um, who were the year below and we're like, right, we'll get him. We're the older boys who want to join. Us. <laughs> and yeah, turns out he was quite good. <laughs> Brilliant. So one thing I love is the name Dancing on Tables. Where did that originate from? Yeah, um that was literally before like our first actual show and um, so before we had Callum, it was the night night before we due to play this school show which we got together for um, and we hadn't actually settled in a name so we were like, I don't know, 16, 17 at a house party the night before and I was like, right, locked ourselves in a room we're, like, we're not leaving here till we have a name um, and dancing tables was decided there and then and yeah, we, we sometimes regret it but I always think that... Stuck right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nothing I could do about it now. Did we just say that? So that was originally the, a house party? So many moons ago when I worked on a radio station, I interviewed The Fray. Ah. Uh, they were supporting The Feeling at the Corn Exchange in Edinburgh. And they did the exact same house party. They got all the people that were at the house party to write a name of the band, what they thought it would be, fold up, put in a hat. And they picked out the first couple, which were terrible. They said, said, right, whatever the third one is we pick out, that's what we're going to call the band. And it was yeah. The Fray. <laughs> so <laughs> that's really yeah. House parties have got a lot to answer for, haven't they? Um, yeah, so... Um, your first gigs, you went on to obviously progress from there and you actually won a Doug Fairman Press Award, didn't you? Yeah, In 2016? Yeah, I think that was just after we kind of started um, and we you know, were still quite young and we got this email through and you know, it was like the first kind of awards thing that any of us had ever been to. Um, we didn't expect to win it, we were up against another couple of bands um, and yeah, we, we kind of got the nod but oh, it was just... I think when we went up the first time, Callum forgot to turn his amp on, and then <laughs> second, time. second, yeah. When when we won, we had to go off and play another one, and I didn't plug my guitar in. I'm like so bad with like <laughs> electronics. Your microphone's definitely switched on tonight. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was just it was great to get that and like get that like acknowledgement though, like quite early on. Because I think the only thing we'd released was one single, um, which we'd recorded ourselves in like the drummer's basement. Um, but it was great to see, you know, like, that we were getting like an award for like live performance. Was that the confidence booster? Yeah, so, yeah, it was. Yeah. Especially in your hometown as well, because you're from Dunfermline, aren't you? Originate from that area. Yeah, yeah. It was Jim who's been giving us the award as well. So like, <laughs> I, I mean, so like we played first, and then obviously we never expected to win. So kind of those three drinks and everything, and maybe shouldn't have been at that age. Um, <laughs> But then we got, we'll to get, yeah, <laughs> got to get the award and I just see Jim Leishman and I'm putting the arms out doing the airplane. And Are you a Dunfermline fan yourself? As a, as a big Dunfermline fan, I thought I was going to be my one and only chance, but we keep kind of bumping into him and 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jim, Jim's been in here, he's been in the show, he's been on one of our sister shows, so oh, Jim's a, a friend of State of Mind, so yeah, Jim's a good guy. So, yeah. <laughs> Read them on the Salt and Sauce show, Jim, if you're watching. Yeah. Um, so yeah, being from Dunfermline, obviously one of the big music scenes in Dunfermline is PJ Malloy's. Yeah. Was that a big factor in you guys, getting to where you are today? Yeah, same. yeah, they kind of, the guys that own it, like, they just kind of took us under their wing and gave us like a lot of support shows to start off with, because it's like, you know, obviously when we, I think we did like one headline show when we first started off and you know, nobody came because nobody knew who we were. And so they were great in getting us on the shows that they thought people would, would like us and come and see us again and set us up with support shows. And like Aberdeen, Dundee, they yeah. helped us with that. And like, when we finally did like our first, like, well, our, our next headline show with them, yeah, it was like a seller. And they, they were just like, yeah, they really kind of like, Helped us like yeah. get to where we, where we are as well as just being a venue. You know I mean? Yeah, because yeah. there's quite a lot of famous faces that have passed through those doors, aren't they? Definitely, yeah. I mean, I think Dunfermline as a whole is a music scene, and you're know, growing up, and you know, you've got so many people that you're kind of you you know you hear stories about bands at big country skids, whatever that have been in the town, and you're trying to follow their path. But then you see like the people who have played PJs over the years, who you know like. Just huge, huge names. I mean, there's the Baldi's one that just yeah, goes to Yeah, exactly. Mind. Yeah, Louis Baldi, like, um, Catfish in the Bottle. Catfish in the Bottle. Yeah. Miles Kane. Yeah. Bug. They seem to just get them, like, early on. They seem to know he's coming in. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a great place. The, the green room there has got posters all over the walls from over the years, which is just the most... I, I mean, we've got off lightly, but it was the most abuse you'll ever see by artists who just like draw stuff on other people but you always think like I wonder who drew that like yeah. that could have been Jake Bug yeah. I won't say what <laughs> well, um, so yeah I mean obviously the, the day and age that we're living in just now with Covid um, places like that are kind of possibly struggling aren't they it'd be such a shame if something like do you think they'll survive this I mean I know it's quite a serious sort of thing to ask but it'd be it's such a shame so if, like kind of like people are like they've done the what they can at the moment and I think they've got like a lot of plans with, you know, as soon as things relax, they'll do what they can to get music going again. And, uh, it's kind of, I mean, I feel like it's, it's the heart and soul of the town anyway, like especially like music wise, but also like, everybody seems to go there on like a night out and stuff. Like, I hope, yeah, I think, I hope and I think that they will come but, through. Come through, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, yep, yeah, I'm doing my research. This is something I say quite a lot in my podcast, doing my research. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm doing my research on you guys. Um, your song actually featured on the Scottish Water campaign on TV, didn't it? Yeah, I, I just realised that I came in today with the Scottish Water Water. I know. Water. That, that wasn't me showing up. Tell me on Scottish Water. Oh, where did I get this thing from? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was, that was amazing. That was, we, we met the, the head of Scottish Water at the kind of launch. Um, and apparently they just googled Scottish bands and just scrolled on YouTube um, and found our track home and they're like, that's perfect. Um, so yeah, I think this is like the third year we've been on the adverts now, um, which is really cool. And my friend, a, a guy, uh, Declan Welsh, we were at a festival together and we just got that news through and he's like, you've absolutely nailed it. He's like, you haven't sold out in the slightest because it's trying to like keep people from wasting water and using plastic. Like you've got it. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a, a great like campaign to be a part of as yeah. well. And um, yeah, don't have to feel like we're kind of selling our soul. There's, there's a bit of, there's a bit of you touched there. on the launch party, there's a bit of story about that, isn't there? Well, is that uh, is <laughs> Right, okay, maybe maybe how did I say this? You didn't really do the launch party, did you? In Glasgow Square because the council oh, moved you on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll keep you right, mate. I'll yeah, keep you right. <laughs> yeah. God, I forgot. Yeah, that was mad. It was all this thing, and we got like we actually sorted out like the sound and everything, um, and turned up and started playing, and then got angry. Not when you got council <laughs> people going one one song. Yeah, and then they were like, yeah. Glasgow you would have thought they played like, but it was set up. In front of the council building. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to help out. Yeah. So the thing is, we're being the salt and social, we're the east coast, so we can slate the west coast. Yeah. 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 So we're like, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. So yeah, you, you also actually appeared in an Adidas advert for Shoe, the, the shop, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, that was, um, it was the a one that they did with um, Adidas Gazelles and it was shot down in Edinburgh. Um, Portobello Arcade? Portobello, Port 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 yeah, where we'd actually... I mean, I don't think it's linked, but we'd actually done a photo shoot there in the arcade about six months before. And yeah. um, I, I like to think of some like wee guy going, "Oh, we had a band in here doing something," and then, but 
probably not. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, no, yeah, that was cool. It's it's just so weird seeing because I like, kept like popping up on Instagram and things, and it's just weird seeing like knowing how many people have listened to your track and yeah. just kind of just wish you had it at the end, like by dancing on tables. But the yeah, last one that we're talking about sort of TV things because one of your singles actually made it on the Made in Chelsea as well, didn't it? Yeah, we've managed. I think it's like. Three, three three songs I've managed to get on so far. Just just been like mad. Like it was like the first first time we, we got it. We was like this is crazy. Like um, and then like we finally just liked us, so we picked it again and again. But it's just quite funny like seeing that music with like you know that show is just yeah. like the kind of the wealthiest people in London like yeah. playing tennis. And you just think like we were like sitting, from we were, like, sitting <laughs> eating, like little focaccias when we were recording this <laughs> like. Well, I don't for catch is a bit of an oxymoron. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about some of your music. So because you before you got signed, sorry, uh, you released a record called Tracy. Yeah. How how do you guys come up with come up with your songs basically? Do you all sit down as a group together and do some songwriting, or does there one particular band member that does it, or do you all chip in? It's kind of like varied over the years. Like it used to start with just me or Robbie separately writing a song and then bringing it to the band, and we'll just work it out. But yeah. Over the years, like me and Robbie, now kind of like write together, like just like come in with like an idea, work out the song, and then like take it to the guys, and then we'll just like kind of work out as a band. And with them, um, we managed to like write with like a lot of like amazing people in America as well, yeah. which has been like the last couple of years. Yeah, it's just been like a crazy experience, just like compared to how, anyway, how I used to write now, like. Way I write now with other people. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, let's move on to America because you're actually signed with a, a label in Nashville called LD Music. Yeah. How did that come about? So that actually came from Tracy, actually. Yeah, um, so, like, we'd written a song and we were looking for somebody to produce it. Um, and basically, like, we just looked online and just kept searching for people and we came across um, this producer called Femka. Um, who we then got to produce it, who then we got chatting, who we got writing with, and who then mentioned, oh yeah, by the way, I've got a label, like, I'd love to sign you guys, but, well, yes. <laughs> Why not? So, here we are, yeah. <laughs> so, have you been over at Nashville quite a bit, or? Yeah, we've been over quite a few times. It's just the most, yeah, surreal place. Everything is just so intensely music, and yeah, so just the highest standard as well. You go into bars, and you're seeing people, and they've probably like been playing at the top level for like 25 years and you're like I've, I've got to go and like record this afternoon and <laughs> <laughs> I mean I want to play like them. Yeah so did you, did you do any gigs yourself over there when you were over or? Yeah we played um, yeah, oh, the basement. The basement yeah. It's um, like a kind of pretty small um, like venue but like our label kind of set up and invited like a lot of like people from like other record labels and publishing companies all around Nashville. Because you like walk if you walk in like the streets there, it just looks like normal houses. Yeah. And it's like they're all like writing houses or publishing companies and you're like it just looks like just a normal house like you would, yeah, would live or something. Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned you did some writing over in America. How does that dif differ from writing in Scotland compared to in America? How what's the difference? I think just like writing with people that do that as a living, um I think really the first time we did it, we were kind of like a bit out of our depth because we kind of, I don't know, it was like, a, it was kind of a learning process, but it's just like, I think a lot of people think as well, it's just going to be like somebody writing a song for you, where it's more like they kind of just sit there and be like, what have you got? And you kind of play what you have and then they'll be like, have you thought about trying something different here or there? Yeah. And it's more just like helping you like craft your song, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Because one thing, obviously, I noticed is that what you do here in Scotland is you tend to go away to the West Coast of Cottage, is that right? Do you guys, do you hire that? Is it someone's family member or what, what's no, the sort it, of that? It's a, it's a, a guy um, who runs it. I don't really know his background, to be honest, but he lives in a, in a house um, and then you've just got a big dirt trap with pigs and chickens and everything. And then at the other end is a cottage and this like, massive recording practice wow. space. Um, so we just kind of got friendly with them and go as often as we can, pretty much. So that's what you do a lot of your writing, is it like a good escape to go there and just yeah. sit and yeah. fully focus on writing a song? It's great, like, for, like, especially, like, learning, it, like, these songs, like, to play them as a band, because um, there's just, like, no, kind of, like, all right, we'll just go and practice these couple hours. It's just, like, you'll be like, right, we've got this, like, you've got 
48 hours till they spend as much time as we can to make these songs like as good as they can be. Yeah. There was one time that we came back from Nashville at like six in the morning and we left at like eleven to go down there and it was literally like, right, these are all the songs we've just written, like let's make them dancing tables songs. We all just kinda of have that freedom and that time and yeah, it was so that cottage has got a lot to answer for. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so one last thing before we kind of crack on the interview. Um, it's a salt and sauce show, as you know. Um, you guys are from Dunfermline. Maybe you can settle an argument here. Salt and sauce or salt and vinegar? Salt and sauce. Is it? And a salt and vinegar, man. <sighs> We've got a divide. Yeah. We've got a divide in the this, might, this might be the start of the end of dancing. <laughs> <laughs> so talking of which, we're going to cross over our chippy of choice this week. Here's how we got on. Chippy of choice this week. I am right in the Edinburgh city centre on Broughton Street. I am at Cafe Picante. This is an old haunt of mine. I used to love coming here. Great little chip shop. And at the weekends as well, they normally have a live DJ performing in their chip shop. Obviously, due to COVID, that's not happening at the moment. But if you're in Edinburgh city centre, stone throw away from the Playhouse Theatre, get yourself along to Cafe Picante. This week's Chippy of choice. Yes, thanks very much for this week's Chippy of Choice. So I'm still joined on the couch by Robbie and Callum from Dancing on Tables. And um, Before we started the interview, we've got our state of mind wall at the back here. I think you've seen it on last week's interview with Nick Mercer. Um, what two records did you pick? You picked one obviously first. Yeah, I went for uh, Common People by Pulp. Um, just because it's, it, yeah, it's just a, an absolute classic. Um, and yeah, love Pulp. I saw their... I don't know if it was their last show. I saw them, them play Tea in the Park anyway, right. and I was like 15, and it was I was the only one out of all my friend group who wanted to go see them, uh, and just had the best time. And That's yeah, could, couldn't pick anything else. Okay, so Callum, what did you pick up though? I went for Baggy Trousers by Madness. We uh, listened to a lot of Madness in lockdown, uh, having family parties, so it was a, a good time, yeah. It's a good disco classic, isn't it? Yeah, a good combination. Yeah. <laughs> so let's get back to you guys. You were named in the top 10 Brits to watch. Yes, we were. That was... Sorry to interrupt, but I believe we dubbed as a new Coldplay as well. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. Was um, that my name that named you? No, I think... I don't know who started the whole Coldplay thing, um, but it just kind of... So somebody chucked it in. Yeah, it, and it kind of grew arms and legs, and then everybody started saying it. Um, which, to be fair... Like, I, I actually quite like a lot of Coldplay stuff. I think yeah. they get a, a hard time. Um, maybe, yeah, I, I, won't, I won't get into details. I think they get yeah. a hard time. Yeah, the Scottish but, Coldplay. The right? Scottish yeah. Coldplay, yeah, the cooler Coldplay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the top 10 Brits to watch, how was that? That was mental, yeah. It was very funny. It was, um, so it was Variety Magazine named us, um, just out the blue, I just got an email saying that they'd picked us um, but it was like people in, you know, there was film and other singers and just like people from all all walks. Um, I always find it quite funny because there was five of us, um, but it was ten, 10 Brits to watch, but they kind of encompassed us all as one. Um, and we went down to London for the, the awards and like we were like hanging out with Simon Pegg for ages and like, all these massive film stars and everybody wanted to chat. So was it still like a big fancy hotel or was it? Yeah, yeah. the craziest hotels I've ever seen. This like felt very out of our depth. I don't think we realised what it was going to be like. But no. he, he was the guitarist, spilt his wine over the head of BAFTA, um, oh. over his shoes, um, which I always think that, well, I don't think he maybe remembers, but I remember, because <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to die. Yeah. And I suppose it's probably one of the events where you probably never bought a drink that night, I'd imagine, or was no, it? No, no. That was, yes. uh, yeah. <laughs> probably so. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see gossip for that night? What else happened? Like, I'm watching like that, like you said, brushing shoulders with slaves. Yeah, um, well, my favourite story was, we. well, I, I was standing chatting to somebody, and I just heard somebody shouting, Robbie, Robbie, Robbie. And I thought it was the boys just trying to wind me up. I said, I'm trying to be professional and network here. I said, Robbie, Robbie. And I turned around and it was the rest of the boys and Simon Pegg waiting for a photo. And it's Simon shouting, Robbie, I'm, I'm really sorry, mate. I need to go get a photo. I came over. He's like, what the fuck's taking you so long, mate? I was like, I'm sorry, Simon. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was 
Unreal, it really was. So you've obviously recorded a few songs up until this point where you've been nominated for the top 10 Brits to watch. You think you're getting quite a big following at this stage now? Is this something you're aware of? I think so. Yeah. I think at that point, like I think O was out, um, Missing, and those two like did like really well on Spotify, like far much better than like any song we'd ever put out had done. And um, and then like the Scottish Water campaign as well. And so it was all this kind of stuff where we were like, you know, that we'd never like realised we could do with our music and stuff. So I think this was like definitely a shock to go to that awards thing. But I think we were like knew that the, the songs were picking up and stuff and people were like taking a bit mm -hmm. of notice and stuff. Mm -hmm. and you did a little bit of a substitution in band members, didn't you? Because is it Michael left and Reese joined? Yeah. Was that all amicable what happened there? Yeah, no, it was like you still hang out with Michael all the time and stuff. Um it was it was I mean we we started the band as the same when we were like sixteen, seventeen and by this time I think we're maybe like twenty one ish. I can't quite remember. Um but you know it'd been a while and what kind of interests you when you start and up till then and it was getting serious and it's taken up a lot more of our time and um yeah totally fine and we're, we're still good pals then but Reese is yeah Reese is brilliant he uh he was actually the drummer of another band as well who we actually went on tour with so you then, just go and put you yeah <laughs> well, come and play with us come and play with us yeah um but no it's 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 a great yeah a, it wasn't a wasn't a bad thing to to get recent. Ah, so. Good, good. So once Reese joined, you went on a bit of a UK tour doing sort of gigs around Edinburgh, Aberdeen, stuff like that, and then you did some city festivals down south. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I was yeah, it was the first year getting like kind of good crowds down in England. I think it was like the city festivals are brilliant because it's usually what like ten pounds a ticket or something, and you get to see anyone you can, and there's usually like a couple like kind of pretty big headliners, mm -hmm. and then just like smaller bands all throughout and so that was like we were playing to like kind of big venues of like between like 300 and like the one in bristol was like oh, five massive, six hundred yeah. and like it was just so filled out because everyone's just kind of going who's next who's next and you like we were getting like a lot of like a lot of like kind of followers and stuff on like spotify and things like that from that and so it was like perfect to kind of go back and start playing some more like english shows afterwards and that, that led to you supporting Only Sons, is that right? Yeah, they were, um, I, th I think, they are, yeah, we met them at... Um, Show in London. Yeah, they kind of came along. Ba basically, um, one of the guys came along and just said, I'm in a band and like, we really want you to support and thought instead of sending an email, we'll just come to the show. So, yeah, like, <laughs> that's good enough for me. <laughs> yeah. So how was um, that support name? Did you notice a bit of a, a change in sort of... Venues you were playing, then supporting fans like that, or it was great fun to be like. I think we were like at a similar like pace with them, and so like I guess it was like their kind of shows that they were doing down there were like similar to our like Scottish ones up here, and um, but it was great. There was like a couple like really great shows like um, like London. They sold out a show in London, and uh, Birmingham was like strangely yeah. like fun as well. It's just like you know sometimes you like turn up to a venue and you're just like not sure. Yeah. How things that are going to go, news, yeah. But uh, and but we, like by the time we were to go on, it was just like the whole place was just bouncing, and we were like, all right. We, we had like the most like we went from not looking forward to it at all to just an incredible gig, and then we went back to our Airbnb, and it was like we haven't had an Airbnb since. <laughs> it was that like it was the worst night's sleep I've ever had in my life. We woke up in the morning. I'm never coming back to Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, actually, no, we definitely need to come back to Birmingham because that was unreal. Yeah. So then from supporting all the sons, you then got asked to support Catfish and the Bottom Yeah, yeah. That, that actually, they, so we were playing our last show with um, Only Son and we got we got a DM on Twitter um, asking if we're free to support Catfish and the Bottom are, are the boys free next Thursday and Friday? Well, let me check my diary. Yeah. <laughs> right, it's like, because he's the, t it's like the tour manager, isn't he? I, th I think so. And we were like, we were like, sure, we know him from somewhere, like, but we weren't sure, like, it well, must have been. Just like the tour manager's name, didn't that? Just his name, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. we kind of like realised this guy's like the, the tour manager of like Catfish. And so straight away, everyone's like, oh, yeah. Well, like, absolutely <laughs> mental. But then you're kind of like, well, it might not be that. It could be like playing like an after party or something, which would still have been like, incredible. And then, so like, he straight away we were messed about, yep, free, 
and then you're just waiting all day. Um, and I think it was after we played the flight, that show in Liverpool, uh, went outside, just like checked the message, and it was like, it's the support, like, catfish yeah. on the like, so and your was just like, absolutely mental. Because yeah. he actually he replied while we were on. We were playing, um, yeah. And I remember, like, making eye contact with our tour manager, Neil, and being like, like, giving him eyebrows, <laughs> like, as he replied. And he was like, <laughs> yes. um, so that must have, like you seem to just keep going this way. Is it, what, that would be an, an even bigger upgrade in venues? You're talking like oh, Hydro, and, as, uh, yeah, yeah, Hydro and P and J and Aberdeen. It was just like incredible, but like so like frightening when you get out there. I mean, at Hamish phoned because I think it, like me and uh, Neil were picking up like a photographer, so we were a bit behind, and Hamish just phoned me, and he was just like, like. Remember to switch yeah, your amp on? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, is like, this is like you. Like, oh, well, you see, remember to switch your amp on. We, like, when, when we got on, um, like, we, like, run samples with Gregor's laptop. Right. And Reese triggers it. And he's like, Gregor, Gregor, your laptop's not turning on. And oh, somebody oh. knocked out the charging cable. So it died. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I, I, like, crouched down because I, like, Kind of Where was not, this, sorry? Was it the high this is, No, this is the, the, the first Aberdeen show one. Aberdeen, Aberdeen, yeah. yeah. So yeah. what, um, like, 8,000? 10, yeah, 10, I think it, 000, yeah, yeah. Um, and so we like, guy yeah. Like, <laughs> so yeah, so like, but I'd like, I normally kind of face away from the crowd, like for the start of the set, like it's just something I've always done. So I kind of like crouched down and did it, and then it took like two and a half minutes to the longest fix. two and a half minutes. And cramping. I was cramping so badly, and I'm like, I'm not letting this go. <laughs> like I'm not turning around until we are playing. Um, but yeah, I've never been so relieved to hear Reese doing the drum intro in my life. <laughs> yeah. That would be an awkward time for Windows updates to be doing, wouldn't it? I know. Oh my <laughs> god, yeah. Yeah, so that must have been a big adrenaline rush performing like say venues like that and like say the hydro and stuff. Are you aware of such a big crowd when you're do obviously you're aware of it, but are you actually I think aware of the, the sort of magnitude of a crowd like that? I feel like I think before we were all like really, really nervous, like 'cause obviously I think it's only human nature, the it? biggest yeah. show we'd played before that was maybe to like 600 people or something at a festival or like maybe a bigger crowd at a festival but it was just like this is like like the hydro especially you know so it's like you go and see like your favorite band at the hydro and like i think it was like we from the moment we like walked on i feel like i felt i just felt like i was so nervous going on as soon as like got on and started playing i was just like just so excited because i was like this is what we've been like working towards like for years yeah. and now you're getting it so you're just gonna up. like yeah you're just like enjoying it so it was just like played and we came off like i don't want to go off like i want to do that again and you're like great i'm doing it again tomorrow yeah. night like, <laughs> yeah so how many days did you do with catfish uh we did we did two we did aberdeen and glasgow right. um but yeah it was amazing they're really nice guys as well and they kind of had a like quite a similar route to us and like we would played a lot of the same venues and we're kind of swapping stories and um, yeah, they like they they know like the guys from PJ Malloy's and stuff as well. Like, and, yeah. And our our tour manager, um, he he was in a band before, and he got asked to support. This must have been like what, eight or nine years ago. Yeah, asked to support Catfish in the Bottom and at PJ Malloy's, but him and his mates were going to Magaluf, yeah. so they never did it. <laughs> so he, yeah. he's, like, <laughs> he's like, it actually did. He's yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. it's like. <laughs> In the dressing room of Van McCann being like, oh, I nearly supported you, just seen that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you get that everywhere you go, Van. <laughs> so we talked earlier in the interview about uh, this cottage away up the West Highlands, is it? Um, did do you record the, the songs up there as well? Or was I think you do some work, am I right in saying, in a studio in Edinburgh? Is that yeah, it? we um, we usually just kind of do demos up in the cottage and then we go to uh, Chamber Studio in Granton. Um, the short sort of, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, did that actually be called The Lighthouse? Or the, the, no, uh, no. Sure. no Dude, like that's that's one. still going, still I think. Going, right? But uh, this one's like, um, it's by, it's by the opposite chippies. Oh, right. <laughs> See the yeah. Um, I mean, that's some venue. I had to look at some images on, on Google. It's, what a place that is to record. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. The guy who runs it, um, a guy called Graham, we've kind of got to know quite well over the years, and kind of he's really kind of on to exactly what our sound like is, and like whenever we kind of suggest things like he's always like right i know exactly that. let's try this and like he's a great guy to work with and just the we'll say like oh like 
what about this sound? And he's like, oh yeah, I've got a pedal. Or like, oh, try this guitar. And just, I don't know where he st stores all of his stuff. It's just incredible. Because there's been a lot of famous people that have recorded in there, like so Ida Wild, Amy McDonald, and yeah. a few others as well, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a cracking setup. So like, you were about to announce a, a 2020 UK tour, and then obviously COVID hit. About four days in. Yeah. Um, we, we got, to be fair, we got our two which I think are still our favourite shows, even more than the Catfish shows we did. That sold out Aberdeen and Edinburgh ones. And yeah, it just felt like... The like, wind taking right yourself, sorry. Yeah, pretty much. But like we had yeah. these two shows where it was just... It felt like finally that everything we've been trying to get to, we're like, right, this is it. Like the whole crowd going and like Edinburgh crowds are kind of traditionally a bit more reserved and everything. And, you know, we were walking on like we'd walked on in Aberdeen the night before and you know everyone's like screaming when we walk on stage and we come on at Aberdeen and it's just like dead silence but oh no and then yeah. sorry silence oh no here we go um, and then the first song starts and it's everyone yeah, mental, eh? generally thought the speakers were gonna fall like for the last half of the set I was terrified like tried to hold on it's just um, that people are that polite that they've that's it yes, yeah. while you sound yeah. check and <laughs> the the right, so. respect the musicians <laughs> so will that tour continue obviously when this hopefully all brushes over yeah um it's just yeah i think the dates originally got res rescheduled to like this month <laughs> uh like when it when it first went into like kind of lockdown and now they've been uh it's looking like april right. um may I think. But it's, yeah, it's, so the, the rest of the UK ones have been redone and then we've actually, because it's been so long, we've stuck another Edinburgh and Aberdeen one um, and a Glasgow one at King Tut's as well, kind of alongside. So we're, it is a rescheduled tour technically, but it's yeah. pretty much a different tour. So what have the band done to help pass the time during lockdown? Have you been up to much? Have you been writing more material? Or we wrote a lot of music, yeah. Like me and Robbie just got on Zoom like every day almost mm -hmm. I think and just like for an hour or two and just like wrote a song like a day and I think I, by the end near the end of when we could start to see each other again we had like 35 or 40 songs written so like that was like a great thing for us and like since then we've just been like when we could get into rehearsal room like start practicing them again and uh, you know, went with plans like plans to go back in the studio. And we're just like picking like the top five and stuff, and just separating the good songs from like there were a few yeah. pretty awful songs. Listening in back, there, going, oh no, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> must have been having a bad day that day. <laughs> well, that's fine. So, I mean, your latest single is uh, or EP, whatever you want to call it, is "Tell Me." Is that right? Yeah, Tell yeah. Me. So we can get that on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, all this. All this yeah, universe. yeah. Um, that's we've been. Um, I think that's maybe the fourth or fifth single we've released from this EP. I think maybe four. Um, but that, yeah, that was one that we wrote when we were over in Nashville. Um, there's a couple of guys over there. And it's one of the ones that we've been playing kind of since we wrote it, basically. Um, and play, playing it live. And by the end of the song, people are always like kind of jumping along, which, you you know, when you've not released it, you're thinking, right, that's we'll definitely that's release time, that one. Yeah. Kinda <laughs> passes the test. <laughs> Um, but no, it's a cool one. It's a, a really kind of, really kind of upbeat, um, yeah, just a, a good yeah. fun song to play. As I mentioned earlier, with Nick Mercer from Sergeant on the show last week, and a name that cropped up there is going to crop up again here. And I'm, I'm sure you're going to talk well of him as Jim Gellickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah Jim's was a great he guy. On your, on your journey uh, to where you're now, how is he? Yeah, he's, he seems like a really, really. I mean, in fact, he is a really good guy for kind of champion, championing. Um, kind of young Scottish talent through and he's kind of given us a gateway like with like this, the show that he does on amazing radio and kind of he always supports our tracks when they come out and then from that you know we, we're getting played in that amazing radio in America and stuff now and on the London shows and things so he's kind of I, I think anyway when when you look for Scottish music kind of his opinion is kind of the one that you first look to I reckon yeah because I, I, with him it's only really sort of BBC introducing isn't it that and up yeah. to BBC Scotland. No, I, I always feel with introducing, like we get so hard done by up here because you get like BBC introducing Lancashire and West Midlands and things and up here you just get Scotland, just Scotland and yeah. it's just one kind of, one show, one team and yeah, it's you, you get less opportunities I feel. 
Definitely. So whatever you're doing, guys, if you've got access to Amazon Music, Apple Music, um, Spotify, get on, search for Dancing on Tables. Callum, Robbie, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Thank you very, much. very much. It's been great. Cheers. Thank you.